In this episode, let's take a look at the Mic Me Gold, which is a large diaphragm condenser microphone. First of all, what is the Mic Me Gold? It is, of course, a large diaphragm condenser microphone. Sounds very similar to the AKG C414, which is a legendary studio microphone. It is an audio recorder that records up to 24-bit 96 kilohertz wave files. It is also recording into AAC when you record video with your phone along with the Mic Me, and there's a pretty tight integration there when you use the Mic Me app. Shooting video actually does some really interesting things. Namely, when you are recording video with the Mic Me app on your phone, specifically iOS at this point, an Android app is supposed to be coming later in 2019. What it does is it actually records to the Mic Me, but it also keeps tabs and can sync the audio that you record with your Mic Me back to the video that you recorded with your phone. So if you lose Bluetooth connectivity while you're shooting video, not a problem, it'll sync it up in post. It is also a USB microphone, so you can record directly to your computer. It is also a Bluetooth wireless microphone, so you can, of course, as I mentioned, record to the video app, the Mic Me video app, but you can also record and control the Mic Me with an app on your iOS device. It also has a 3.5 millimeter output, which you can use for headphones or to send audio to your camera with a 3.5 millimeter microphone input. And as I mentioned before, you can control the Mic Me with the buttons that are on the back of it or using an iOS app and again soon, an Android app. So let's get you some audio samples that have not been processed. Here's an audio sample using the Mic Me Gold. This is the large diaphragm condenser microphone I am recording down in my basement studio here. We have sound blankets on both sides of me, one behind the camera, a uh, rug underneath me here, another blanket behind me there, and then a concrete wall. <laughs> um, and then uh, let me give you a few moments of silence here so we can get a practical noise floor reading just to see where things sit, and also make sure that it's actual ambient noise in the room and not self-noise generated by the microphone. All right, there we go. There is a lot of noise outside. It's windy today, so I don't know if that's coming through or not. Let's see what we get. Here we're recording in the car to the mic me. I've got the mic me down here. And the windows are open here, so we've got, we're in a parking lot, we've got cars driving by. So this is what you can expect. Okay, we are recording here, Mike Me Gold. And uh, this is a recording in a quieter place, although there is behind me um, some things cooking on the stove. And uh, this is what we can expect out of the Mike Me Gold when we're working in a decent environment. Lots of reverb in this area. We're in a kitchen dining room area. So this is what it sounds like there. Okay. You're getting ready to go out into the field and dig up some um, ancient reptiles, marine reptiles, and possibly some invertebrates. Tell us about where you're going. Going to Nevada on the loneliest highway in America, Highway 50. Is it actually called that? Yes, but we're going off the off of the loneliest highway in America. Okay. Because where we're going, you have to go on gravel roads. And what are you looking for? We're looking for ichthyosaurs and the associated fauna. Okay, what are ichthyosaurs? They are marine reptiles, ancient marine reptiles, and they lived in the oceans during the time of the dinosaurs, but they were not dinosaurs. Okay. So the refrigerator's running over here, just so everyone's aware. That's good, because it keeps our food cold. Yes, and the... Uh, Motorcycle gang is driving by outside. Well, maybe just one motorcycle, but it sounded like a gang. Now in the audio sample I recorded in my basement studio, we also did a practical noise floor test. So in that silent section, I measured the silent portion and I found that there was a fair bit of low frequency rumble. And I actually found that through all the recordings, but if you apply a high pass filter in post, this becomes an extraordinarily quiet microphone in terms of generating self-noise. So it does really, really well on the self-noise front, again, if you apply a high-pass filter somewhere around 80 hertz, maybe 75 hertz. In terms of its overall build, the grill itself is all metal, and then the base and the top appear to be some sort of plastic, relatively high-grade plastic. It has a 3 8 inch tap on the bottom, so you can connect it to a microphone stand that has a 3 8 inch screw, or it also comes with a quarter-inch adapter. 
There's a rubber non-skid pad on the bottom, so if you do place it down on a table or a desk, it won't slide around a whole lot. Overall, the fit and finish is pretty good, and I think it seems durable enough that I would have no qualms taking it out on location. It does have an inbuilt lithium battery, and the battery lasts about two hours and 15 minutes if you have Bluetooth turned on. Of course, it'll last a little bit longer if you turn Bluetooth off. It will stand by for about 14 days, so if you're gonna leave it sitting for a long time, you will need to charge it up again before you start recording. It takes about three hours to fully charge it from zero all the way up to 100%, and you can power it via its micro USB input on the back of the mic. So if you are recording out and about, you can bring a USB battery bank and get a good long recording time. One really cool thing this does is that you can, with the MicMe app, record video and also control the mic at the same time. So you'll get your meters on the app itself. And what's interesting is that when you're done recording, even if you've lost Bluetooth connectivity during the course of the shoot, as soon as the Bluetooth connection is restored, it will sync the audio from the MicMe to the video that you recorded with the MicMe app. So really kind of a cool feature if you need to get better quality audio that's not necessarily a microphone attached directly to your phone, but you can have it remote from the phone closer to the sound source and get much better audio quality that way. MicMe tells me that they're also working with third parties that produce camera apps to potentially integrate control of the MicMe into their camera apps as well. We'll see where that goes. An integration with Filmic Pro would be really nice. The mic me has a cardioid polar pattern, meaning that it picks up mostly on the front of the microphone, starts to fall off as you move around the, the sides, and then it falls off almost entirely once you get to the back. Here's a demonstration using some white noise. Now this demonstration is also interesting from the standpoint that it shows you which frequencies fall off the most when you get to the back, because it's not everything. And a lot of times with microphones, when you get off axis quite a bit, that is to say off from the front of the microphone, you will still pick up some sound, but it will pick up some frequencies more than others. Let's take a listen. Thanks to Airtable for sponsoring this episode. When I first started working sound for film, on my very first job, I forgot to bring the hiding kit for my lavalier microphones. Seriously. So how do you avoid being that guy? Planning and checklists. Ugh, what a drag, you say. Well, Airtable is the online and mobile tool that makes planning and checklists dead simple and makes your pre-production, production, and post a lot less stressful and a lot more enjoyable. With Airtable, you can create databases of your gear and then drag and drop that gear into different checklists for different types of jobs. But it isn't just for soundies. With a mapping, you can plan out locations. With Gantt charts, producers and directors can plan out schedules so you don't end up hating yourself in post when you forgot to get that pickup shot. And everyone can share their stuff with everyone else on the crew. There are both free and pro account levels. Go check out my packing list and you can see how Airtable can help you be the guy that everyone wants on their next film project. How does it do in terms of plosives, and do you need a pop filter? Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Obviously, this has an analog to digital converter inside of it. It has inbuilt 16 gigabytes of RAM, so you can record to that. You can actually record quite a lot of audio with 16 gigabytes if you're recording, for example, at 24-bit, 48 kilohertz. And what's interesting is that the analog to digital converter in this seems actually quite nice, much better than most USB microphones that I've worked with before. So... Looks like the mic me is holding up nicely there. You can transfer the recorded files from the mic me using USB, or you can also transfer them to your phone and then distribute them from there. So the trick with the phone is I think you can only get AAC to the phone, I think, based on the testing I did. I didn't find a way where I could get a wave file that was recorded to the mic me over to the phone and then out of the phone as still a wave file. <laughs> it seems like it was always converting it to AAC. So AAC, if you're not aware, is a lossy format. It's better than MP3 but it is still a lossy format, whereas WAVE is a non-lossy format or a lossless format. And so if you do want to get those WAVE files off of here, you will probably want to use the USB cable to your computer. So who will find this microphone most helpful? I really think it's going to be people that are into mobile recording, people that want to be able to record with the sound of a large diaphragm condenser microphone, which has a very generally rich sound to it when you're recording dialogue. It's very, very detailed. And if you need to do that on a mobile basis and you don't want to have to take a whole lot of gear with you, this is a really good choice. So for example, 
basically, even if I was going to do a two-person uh, discussion or interview and we were going to sit pretty close, I could use just this microphone and get a pretty nice recording. Now, an interesting thing is that in the beta version of the app that they're working on currently, the iOS version, it also has the ability to control two mic me's and record two mic me's together. So if you were doing a lot of interviews and you had two mic me's, that would be a really kind of interesting way to bring a very, very minimal kit with you on location and get a pretty good sounding interview. I think a lot of singer songwriters that want to perform uh, on video with their mic me and say, for example, record a guitar and them singing at the same time, this seems like a really, really good option for that as well. At the time of this review, the Mic Me Gold comes in at $330 US. There is also a silver version that has a slightly smaller capsule. I haven't tried that one yet. And interestingly, Mic Me is working on a new product they call Pocket. Pocket is basically a pocket recorder that you connect a lavalier microphone to. So it is a pocket recorder. You can hide it somewhere on the person who is being recorded, clip a lavalier microphone on them, and record remotely. And you can also control the recorder from your phone, which is really nice. So you can keep an eye on levels. You can see how things are going. Now, this may especially be a good fit for wedding videographers who are currently using things like the Tascam DR10L and some other similar pocket recorders. Uh, the reason that the pocket is really nice is because you can control it entirely via app. So you have the added advantage of being able to see what your levels are doing and make sure you don't have a problem <laughs> while you're actually recording. Now you cannot monitor it from your phone, but you can at least see the levels, which is much, much more helpful than recorders where you can't see anything. So overall, I see the Mic Me Gold is a super versatile, portable, large diaphragm condenser microphone, really the type of microphone that usually stays in a proper recording studio. Now this one's much more mobile and it has an integrated recorder Bluetooth streaming capability so you can record and sync the video and control the microphone remotely. The sound quality is better than most USB microphones I've used, and it's obviously a very nice portable option for those that record on the go. Now, with every product, <laughs> there are downsides, and this is no exception. So, a few things. First of all, the iOS app. Now, obviously, it's a downside for those who are on Android presently. There is no Android app. Again, that's supposed to be coming later in 2019. However, the iOS app is a little bit quirky. So I, it took me a while to figure out that, for example, you couldn't really transfer a WAV file from the mic me to the app and then from there to your computer. So you're better off just plugging the USB cable in if you want to get the WAV files off. There isn't really a level meter on the mic me itself. Now there's a light on top that shows you when you're recording and when you clip, that is to say you overload the mic me and give too, too loud of a sound that it can record based on the current gain setting, then you'll get this flashing a little bit and that'll indicate that you're clipping. So it's a little bit challenging to set your levels if you don't have the app. So that's one thing to keep in mind. The power button is one of the little buttons on the back here. It has no sort of protection around it. And so I did find on one occasion when I slipped the mic me into this nylon pouch that it came with that I threw it in my backpack and somehow in my backpack, the power button must have gotten pushed. It turned the mic me on and drained the battery so that when I pulled it out and was ready to record, there was nothing left. <laughs> so you will have to watch that if that's the type of thing you do in terms of throwing it into a backpack, which seems to make sense. There does need to be some sort of control there, I think. If mic me could make a firmware change where it didn't power on unless you pressed it and held it continuously for like three seconds, I think some people might, might like that, some people might not like that, but I think that would help prevent it from accidentally getting turned on, at least in some cases. And then finally, if the battery is completely drained, even though you can power the mic me via USB normally, it takes about five minutes of charging before you can turn the mic me on, even if you're still connected to the USB. So if you did find yourself in that situation where the power button got bumped, it got turned on, it drained the battery down, and then when you're going to record, you have nothing left, you'll have to wait about five minutes of charging until you can turn the mic me on. So overall, there is a look at the mic me gold. We will have a review coming up of the mic me pocket here in the next few weeks. I hope that was helpful for you. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave those down below. And if you have not already subscribed, make sure you do that and we'll be sure to get you more great videos on how to improve your lighting and sound for video. Talk to you soon. Bye.